So in our previous sessions, we've been talking about bad debts. We have also talked about provision for bad and doubtful debts in our previous session, and I was able to show you how we calculate the provision for bad and doubtful debts. If I may recap or to remind you, when we are calculating for provision for bad and doubtful debts, when we are applying the percentage, it could be 5, it could be 10, depending on the company's policy. When we are calculating for this provision for bad and doubtful debts, uh, the double entry is, first of all, we are going to debit the bad debts account, and then we shall credit the provision for bad and doubtful debts. We say that the provision for bad and doubtful debts is treated in the balance sheet, and at presentation, it is deducted from the total receivables, so that we are in line with the prudency concept, so that we present a figure of receivables that is close to what the company is actually going to get from its debtors. And then the bad debts account is an expense account, and this expense account is handled in the profit and loss. In some jurisdictions, they say, some people say debit bad debts, others say debit profit and loss. The effect is the same. Now, I would like to bring to your remembrance this fact that number one, there is what we call a balance sheet, or call it the statement of financial position, and then what we call the income statement, or call it the statement of comprehensive income. The statement of comprehensive income, or call it the income statement, or call it the profit and loss statement, handles incomes, revenues, and expenses for a specific time period. But when it comes to the balance sheet, or call it the statement of, of financial position, this one handles assets, liabilities, and equity at a certain point in time. Why am I saying this? When it comes to these two, double en when, the, when, it, when it comes to the double entry that is associated with provision for bad and doubtful debts, we have a balance sheet item, a balance sheet account, and then also we have what we call income statement account. The income statement account here is the bad debts account that we talked about earlier. That one, that is what it, that the, the, the bad debts account is handled in the income statement. And then the provision for bad and doubtful debts is actually a balance sheet account. Now, all balance sheet accounts always have this characteristic. They always have closing balances which start in the next trading period. We have a closing balance that starts in the next trading period as an opening balance. Yet, for um, income statement accounts, they are always closed off to zero. They do not have, they do not carry forward balances. So it means if you're having a bad debt in your books, that bad debt applies only for that trading year. And when you're closing off that balance, there's nothing like you're going to carry forward a bad debt expense in the next period. In other words, there's nothing like carrying forward an expense in the next trading period. No. You only carry forward, up clo uh, you carry forward closing balances of assets, liabilities, and equity. When it comes to revenues and expenses, it's not the case. So we need to have this understanding as we are handling how we are going to treat uh, provision for bad and doubtful debts in this session. So now we are going to look at different scenarios. Again, I would like us to remember that uh, by the time we are, hand we are providing for bad and doubtful debts, we are doing it at a point in the accounting cycle where we are making year-end adjusting entries. Year-end adjusting entries are made after you have prepared a trial balance. So, if you look at our screen, let's look at the first year. Maybe the business has just begun. And yes, the business has been going on throughout the year. So the first year, we have an extract for the trial balance. So this extract for the trial balance, it is having receivables of 100 million. And of course, receivables for 100 million, it's right there. So now, what does that mean? It, receivables is a balance sheet item. It's, since this is the first year of the business operation, yeah, that's 100 million. So we're supposed to make a provision for bad and doubtful debts. So this is pretty straightforward. So that means 
that we are going to go ahead and say 10% of 100 million and we shall end up with 10 million. And so it means 10 million is going to become our provision for bad and doubtful debts. To be specific, this is just a general provision for bad and doubtful debts. So of course, there are the, gen the double entry here is that we're going to go ahead and debit the bad debts account with 10 million. The other item affected is provision for bad and doubtful debts or provision for bad debts. And we shall go ahead and credit it with 10 million. And of course, the other item affected is bad debts. We, it is clear that provision for bad debts is a balance sheet item and so because it is a balance sheet item that 10 million will be it's going to be the closing balance for this year one but that 10 million will become the opening balance for the next trading period so let's go to the second year so we have now started the second year so as we start the second year we have made our business we have you know you know the accounting cycle you have journalized, you have made the double entry in the relevant ledger books, then you have gone ahead and balanced off the books. After balancing off the books, now you come with the trial balance, the one that is not adjusted, the unadjusted trial balance. So I'm just going to get an extract of that unadjusted trial balance. And uh, in that unadjusted trial balance, we have receivables. Let's say now during the course of the business, our receivables increased to 250M. Okay, of course, there are our receivables increased to 250 million, and then we have provision for bad and doubtful debts of 10 million. Now, whenever you see in an unadjusted trial balance, and then you see provision for bad and doubtful debts, and it is 10 million, that figure you're seeing there of provision for bad and doubtful debts of 10 million was actually the open the closing balance of the previous year. Remember, in year one, the previous year. We closed off with the provision for bad and doubtful debts of 10 million. So when you see provision for bad and doubtful debts in the trial balance, it means that that is the opening provision for bad and doubtful. It's, it, that figure came from the previous year. So that's the trial balance. And now in our added information down here, we're being told to make a provision of 10% of the receivables. Of course, it's the company policy, they make a provision of 10%. Now, when we make a provision of 10%, 10%, that is 10 over 100, multiply that by the receivables that year, which uh, the receivables, the accumulated receivables, which is 250 million, you will realize that we now end up with 25 million as our provision. That is what we have. But now, this 25 million that we have calculated, we compare that 25 million with the provision for bad debts, the opening balance we started with at the beginning of the year, which is 10 million. And what you realize is that at the beginning of the year, this is 10 million, the balance was 10 million. And now when we set 10% of the current receivables, it is 25 million. So there is an increase in the trade, in the provision for bad and doubtful debts because the amount of receivables or the data as we have have increased so there's an increase in the provisional so because there's an increase in provisional we subtract and get that increment and when we subtract to get that increment we find that the increase is by 15 million so how do we handle that in our uh, in our books so what we're going to do here is that we shall simply go ahead and debit the provision for uh, debit the bad debts account with the increase, not with the, 20, the entire 25M, but we, we debit it with the increase, which is 50 million. And also, we shall go ahead and credit the provision for bad and doubtful debts with the increase. So you can see in the account for the provision for bad and doubtful debts, we had the balance brought forward from the previous year, which is 10 million. So it means that then the increase was 15M. Of course, when you add those two, it's supposed to give you 25M, yeah? So the other account affected is bad debts. So when there is an increase in provision for bad and doubtful debts, we are simply going to deal with the increase only. So we debit the increase on the bad, the bad debts account and credit the increase on the provision 
from Bada Doubtful Debt's account. So it means when you look at our balance sheet item there, the provision for bad and doubtful debt account, it is uh, going to, it's having a total, a, a balance of 25 million. That balance of 25 million is going to be carried forward to the next year because we're dealing with a balance sheet item. So let's go to that third year. So the third year still, again, we have a trial balance. It's having provision for bad and doubtful debts of 25 million. We all know where that provision is coming from. And then when it comes to receivables, yes, of course, like any balance sheet item, debtors keep paying money. We keep extending credit to more customers. And so at the end of the third year, we ended up having a receivables amount of 150 million. So when we have 150 million, again, we're supposed to apply 10% provision for bad and doubtful debts. So that 10% is definitely going to be imposed on the receivables amount, which is 150 million. And when we impose that receivables right there, you realize that we are getting 15 million. So when you look at 15 million, which is the, the amount of money we've got for provision for bad and downfall debts, you compare it with the, op the, 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 the opening balance of provision for bad and doubtful debts, which is 25 million, you realize that there, is a, there has been a drop in the provision, a decrease in the provision for bad and doubtful debts, and the decrease is 10 million. So how do we handle this in the books? This decrease of 10 million is what we are going to go, and now, because this is a decrease, it, is the, it means it's going to reduce the expense. Now remember, when it comes to bad debts, expense, bad debts, expense, when expenses increase, we debit them. Now, because this is a decrease in the provision for bad and doubtful debts, we are going to instead credit the bad debts account by the decrease, and we shall debit the provision for bad and doubtful debts by the decrease. Remember, provision for bad and doubtful debts is a liability it's treated in the liabilities account and so because liability is reduced by debiting that's why we go ahead and debit it so we debit by the decrease and increase so you realize that uh, when it it is an increase when there's an increment in provision for bad and doubtful debts or when there is a decrease in the in, in provision for bad and doubtful debts the double entry here is strictly with the increase the respective increase for both bad debts and the provision for bad and doubtful debts accounts. So in a nutshell, when there is an increase in provision for bad and doubtful debts, we shall go ahead and debit the bad debts account with the increase and credit the provision for bad and doubtful debts with the increase. In case there is a decrease in bad debts provision or call it provision for bad and doubtful debts, we shall debit the provision for bad and doubtful debts with the decrease or credit the bad and credit the bad debts with the decrease. Now, in some jurisdictions, you will find that uh, some people will say you debit the bad debts, for example, for increasing bad and doubtful debts, that they'll go and debit the bad debts with the increase, or sometimes they just go ahead and debit the profit and loss account. It is still going to give you the same effect because even bad debts are treated on the debit side of the profit and loss account. It's still going to give you the same effect. In case you need any clarity regarding how to treat this provision for bad and doubtful debts, you have questions on why certain things are the way they are, let me know in the comment section below. Arnold Rangakramia is my name from kisembo academy.com.